What's up guys, back again with another video in the HTML series. This episode we're going to continue with the forms and we're going to learn about some more uh, complex things we can do with our forms. So let's get right into it. Um, remember last episode, the last thing we did was make a button, you know, to submit your form and send all the data to the server and whatever and whatnot. Um, there's another type of button that we can make and this is called the image button. And the image button is just simply a button that you link with an image and then the image, uh, the button displays an image basically and you can click on the image and it works as a button. It's, yeah, it's basically just an image that you can click on and then it's a button and cool stuff like that. <laughs> so that might be confusing, but oh well. So let's just show you, so input and then we can give it a type of image, okay? And what this will do is, uh, well, it's gonna give this this thing right here um, but you know to put the image there we do source the source attribute src and then inside of that we would put the location of the image so I already have some images in here so I'm going to do button image and keep in mind um, the button is going to be the same size as the image that you're putting in so you can change the sizing of this button here you can click on it by the way nothing really happens but you can click on it and once you um, do that uh, like I said you could change the uh, image size so let's say we're going to change the width to about uh, 300. We could do that. Oh, 300 pixels. P P P X. So yeah, change the size. That's pretty cool, right? Um, so yeah, we can change the sizing and likewise we can do the height and all that cool stuff. But yeah, that looks like a good size right there. Um, so yeah, that's how you do that. Pretty simple, right? And uh, yeah, so next we have um, like an actual button element. And what this is for is basically an easy way to make buttons. Um, it's an easier way. Um, so you could basically you enclose a bunch of text with this button. Well, not a bunch of, but some text with this these two button uh, elements. And then inside of here, you can have two things. You can either have like a small image for your button, but you can also have text, like I said before. So if we want our um, button to have some text to it, we could obviously just type some text here. So we'll say subscribe. Okay, so there's, you know, that. And you also you can have an image inside of here if you want to. So let's put an image, so image. Um, images are self-closing, so I'll just do that. And then I'll put the SRC, because that's how images work. And then I already have an image in here, so we'll do it. Smiley.png, there we go. So now we get this huge image, uh, huge button actually. It's still, it's, it's still a button, but it's freaking huge. So let's go ahead and change the size of it. Um, to do that, we could just, uh, instead of changing the size of the button, you would change the size of the image because the image is affecting the size of the button, obviously. So let's go ahead and do that. So width, um, we'll set it to about 20 pixels. Should be small, right? There we go. That looks perfect, actually. Um, so let's add a little space right there. Awesome, so that's a cool little button right there looks kind of ghetto but you know with some CSS and all that cool stuff that we can do in the future that's going to look really cool so yeah that's how you do that you don't have to have images in here you could have just text like uh, you know I did originally but uh, yeah so it's all you so um, next we're going to move on to labeling so whenever you um, come across a basically maybe a login page or any kind of form on HTML, HTML websites um, each input box maybe has like a label next to it saying what you're about to fill in. You know, like we did last episode, we just used the P tag and we said like username or password. There's actually a, a um, element that's specifically for that and it, it labels the uh, inputs for you, but it's also for people who are visually impaired or something like that. So whenever they click on the t label, it automatically puts their mouse um, inside of the input box. Uh, if that's a little confusing, I'll show you. So let's go ahead and make an input here. So we're just going to make a regular, you know, input box here. So let me do type, oops, type text. Okay. So there we go. It's right there. I'm actually going to move this down by doing BR. There we go. So yeah, it's just a regular input box, right? So let's put a label to it. So there's two ways to put a label to something. We could either do the for attribute, but first we could just surround it by label. We could do that, that's the simple way, just by surrounding your input box with the label tag. Okay, and then uh, of course we need to put a, like an actual label, like, you know, text. So we could say uh, username, so like that. And so now it says username next to it. That's pretty cool, right? So like I said, if you click on the label, it'll automatically put your cursor inside of the box. So let's test that out. 
So I'll click around and then let's click on the label. Boom. So now it highlights everything and it's selected. So I don't know how that exactly that helps people, but uh, I guess it does. And yeah, so that's how you do that. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? And so uh, like I said, there's actually another way to um, use labels. So let's go ahead and make another input here. We'll do like a password input, you know. Um, so type password. Okay. And um, so instead of enclosing the label, um, enclosing it with the label element, we can just um, link them like basically what we did with the radio um, option input, whatever it is called. So to do that, we can make a label here. So label, and we'll call it password. Let's see what it does. So it's going to put next to it, but look, if we click on it, it's not going to highlight it. Like if you do username, it works, but these aren't linked. So if you click on it, nothing's really going to happen. It just happens to be next to it. So if we want to link them, we could, uh, well, we, ha we have to give this one an ID, our input, we have to give it an ID of, you can choose any ID you want. So we g let's give it an ID of just uh, PWD for maybe, I guess that's short for password maybe. And then you would have to give the label um, element a attribute f um, of four. And then the value of that is going to be the ID that you want to link it to. So PWD. So now they're linked. So let's go ahead and reload. And there we go. So click on here. And now it works, right? So that's pretty cool. So now they're linked. And that's how you do that without, you know, surrounding your input elements with the label element. So that's how we do that. Pretty cool. And uh, yeah. So there's actually another thing we could do is by, um, well, we could group um, a bunch of elements together, input elements. So like later on when you start designing web pages, you're going to have a bunch of freaking inputs maybe on your form and it might get like a whole bunch, like it might get a little confusing. Maybe some of them are related, some of them are not related. So you might want to like group, you know, some of the input boxes together and like, cause if they're, they're similar, right? If that's a little confusing, let's just do it. So let's say we have a, um, a login page, right? And they ask for username and password like we did up here. Okay. Um, Instead of username and password, let's just do something different. We'll do email, um, phone number, and then like something else. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and make those inputs. So input, uh, boom, type, text, and then we'll say, Well, we got to give it an input box, of course. So we'll go ahead and do that. I mean, a label box. Uh, so we'll label it uh, email for email. And don't forget, you need to start putting your um, your input boxes with the name attribute. But I'm lazy, so I'm not going to do it because I don't really need to. Because we're not actually doing anything with this input. So yeah. So email. So now these are linked, right? So if we load, you know, we can click here. Wait, wait what? Oh, not four. This one has to be ID, of course. So there we go. So now these are linked. Cool. So let's go ahead and uh, add another one. We'll just go ahead and copy this, to be honest. We'll do it three times. So we have uh, email. Then we'll do... Let's put this down one. Put this down one. So they're on separate lines. Well, actually, we'll just get rid of these. We don't need these anymore. Okay, cool. All right, and uh, so yeah, that's all that. And so we'll change this from email to, actually we'll just make it username, that's how that works. Uh, username, and then we'll give it a four of username, then an ID of username. Okay, awesome. And then we'll give this a password, and then a four of password, and then a name of password, and then the text of or type of password. Okay, that was a lot, but you know, we're just setting up the inputs here. And so now that they're set up, um, they're all very similar, right? This is all for one login page. So if you want to group together a bunch of elements that are similar for like s similar for some reason, um, you would use the field set element. So we're going to put them inside of the field set element. So we're just going to go ahead and control X, which is going to um, cut these. Then we can paste them when we're ready. So we make field set here. So field set. And then everything goes inside of there, so we'll paste it. And this should all be indented, because that's how shit works. Okay, so nothing actually happened visually, but um, if we put a legend here, legend is basically just the title of whatever you're doing here. So um, this is gonna be your login info. 
Okay, so now this is... Um, oh, I accidentally put field instead of field set. So field set, lol. Okay, so now look what it did. It makes it makes a whole little box here. That's really cool. So I grouped them together in a little box. So I, I think that's really cool. So, um, yep, that's how we do that. And the sizing is kind of weird, but... Um, let's see. I wonder why that is. So if we get a real legend, I'll still have the box here. Um, but the legend is just a title for your inputs. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, so let's try and make this bigger. Okay, I guess that doesn't do anything. So yeah, um, I'm not sure again why the box is so big, but um, yeah, that's how you do that. So I'm sure you could just, you know, change the width of it maybe. Let's try that. I don't know if that's gonna do anything, but. Eh, nah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm sure there's a reason, but yeah, uh, hopefully y'all get the point. Y'all can group a bunch of uh, inputs together with field set and then give them a title with legend. So awesome. So um, let's move on. So now we have something called form validation, which is something you would usually do with like maybe JavaScript or something like that. And what it does is you check, you might want to check and see if they actually put an email in there or they actually put their username in there before submitting, like make sure it's not empty before they submit it. So to make sure it's not empty, you could give um, them give the elements a attribute of required. So this will make sure that before you submit it, you have to fill something inside of the input box. So just give it this attribute, and there we go. So now let's go ahead and our, add our uh, what's it called submit thingy submit button. So input. Type submit. Okay, so we're gonna submit here. Oh well, nothing happens because I didn't set up all the. Uh, the f well, pff, this is not even closed inside of a form. Wow. Um, so we gotta put the form here. Okay. Reload. Yeah. So it says, please fill out this field. So there we go. So if we submit without actually filling it in because it has the required attribute, then it's gonna give you that error and it won't let you submit. So you gotta fill this in before you submit. And there we go, we submitted. So um, yeah, so that's pretty cool, right? Um, so that's how we do that. We can do that for like basically any uh, input. Um, so yeah. I know this formatting looks like trash, but oh well. So um, let's move on. We have a new attribute. Let's, get, let's just get rid of all this crap. Okay. Form, okay. So there's a new input that we could use is for collecting the date if for some reason you would ask the user for their date or a date of first, like maybe their birthday, we can ask them for a date. So we can use date input. So um, input type date, and there we go. Well, let's see what that does. It creates this little um, date box thingy. It actually looks really nice. I guess they updated it um, on Chrome. So it looks really cool. So you can select the date and all that cool stuff. So awesome. So that's how we do that. And um, yeah, so. You can actually type in the letters too if you want to, or the numbers of the date. So um, we can give them a label like always, you know, so label, let's go ahead and do that. So label uh, birthday for B day, BD, BD, yeah. And then we'll give it an ID of BD, of course. Okay, so now we have a label and there we go. So that's how we do that. It's a date input. And then um, we have two more inputs, I believe. This one is gonna be your email input and then your URL input. So we'll just go ahead and change this type to email and see what happens. So email, okay. And now nothing really happens, but what it will do is make it so that if you submit and it's not actually a valid email, then um, it won't let you submit. It's basically like the required attribute that you had before, but it's checking to see um, if it's an actual email that you put in there. So, yeah. And then likewise, we could do URL. So it makes sure that, you know, it's a valid URL before you actually submit it. And, oh yeah, there's one more. Okay, so right after those two, those were, two, those two were easy, right? It's just more validation crap. So next we have the, um, uh, what's it called? Search input. So this will allow you, maybe if you have like a, a search bar on your page, you can make search bars now. So this will make a special looking input that when you type in here, um, you could like have an X here and that's pretty cool. It adds this little X here. So you can like click it off and then uh, yeah. So it's something crazy, but uh, yeah, it adds a little functionality to this little input thingy. And uh, yeah, so also um, that's actually the last thing we have to learn. So bravo, you're done. 
And so the last thing is um, for any of the text inputs that you have on your web page, you can add an attribute called uh, placeholder. So this will, let's just change this to text, normal one. So we can add a placeholder um, attribute and this will do, it'll just leave a, basically what you did with the text uh, area input, this will just leave um, like default text inside. So it will say like uh, banana. Hope I spelled that right. <laughs> Lol. So yeah, it's just giving you like a, a default kind of text to go in there. Placeholders, that's what placeholders are. So yeah, that's what that is. Um, so yeah. Um, so that was a lot. I know probably not as much as last episode, but hopefully I did a better job of explaining. So if you liked it, leave a like. If you have any questions, just subscribe. I mean, <laughs> leave a comment and I'll help you. And then we also we have a Discord that's in the description. If you want to check that out, maybe join, ask some questions, hang out with us, you know, anything. And uh, yeah, so leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and 